I'd totally get it if you hear the name Sabbath E12 and you wouldn't get hyped, or maybe even interested at all. But let me tell you this, you should. Because when GearReader asked me to review another product of theirs, I took a look at their site and I was searching for a truly wireless earphone that packs one thing that I know a lot of people want, but that's usually something that's very hard to find and yeah. I was not disappointed. Price wise it sits around $60, but if you use the link in the description and the coupon code, you should add up at around 44 euros. And if that's worth it, I'll let you know later on. But now let's take a look at that case. And if I have to point out one thing that I don't like so much, it's maybe the fact that it's glossy because that will scratch up over time. But in terms of size, I actually like it quite a lot because as you can see, it's not quite as tall as the Anchor Sound Core Liberty Air, but it's a little bit wider, but generally still quite compact. And Maybe the best thing, it packs a lot of features, like for example, USB Type-C already. It also has four LEDs to show you the st status. It doesn't always kind of activate, you kind of have to take them out usually. Then we also have at the bottom, wireless charging. That's something you usually don't get. The lid here, I have to say, stays closed, but if it's open, then it's a little bit flabby. So that's maybe not the best part. Otherwise, the connection is secure and safe and works out really well. Once you take them out, they definitely pair every time. But I'll get into the mono mode and so on. Otherwise, a little bit later on, we obviously obviously get the typical USB Type C cable that no one really should use because it's just too short. And as you can see, a bunch of different tips. And I think you should definitely find the right one for you. But those actually make a difference in terms of sound. A smaller one, but still, but more in terms of fit. So just try whatever you find here. For example, the standard ones were the red ones, a little bit smaller here. We have some wider ones, some deeper ones, some a little bit more elongated ones and some actually very flat ones that actually almost worked the best for me but they kind of went too far into my ear. So I think you should definitely find something. Otherwise there are available in quite a lot of different colors which is nice. I actually wanted black, I got kind of like maybe bluish silver, there is a silver version, also red ones, black ones and maybe another color that I don't really remember right now. What I also like is that we have a right and left distinction. But maybe more so I like the shape, I'll get into that later on in the comfort part. And then we have buttons. I'll get into the way it works a little bit later on. But now let's actually take a look at them in my ear. And I can tell you this much. I think they're actually super subtle because they look more like a hearing aid. And someone actually asked me if this was one, but it wasn't. But as you can see, they don't stick out that much. And due to the kind of shape, they actually sit pretty much right in your ear. And this very secure. And I would say also super comfortable, especially in my right ear, it sits pretty much so I could forget it. My left ear isn't all that forgiving, but even there it's still very comfortable. In terms of isolation, I would have to say it's above average. So talking to people is a little bit harder because this drowns out a lot of otherwise usually obvious noises. So you are good on that part if you want noise isolation. So comfort, fit, really good. So let's talk about that control now. Now I have to say this. Codec, yeah, not perfect because it supports at least on paper AAC. But every time I check the developer settings, it refers back to SBC and there is definitely an obvious delay. Even though I have to say once you take them out, they usually pair very quickly and the connection was stable at all times. I had no hiccups or anything like that. Mono mode works, mono mode works like this. You take them out, you use them obviously. And if you put the right one in, the left one stays playing or continues playing because the left one is the master. Usually the right one is the master. If you want to use just the right one, what you have to do is take them out, turn this one off or have it inside and then turn the right one on. But you have to have to pair it separately. Usually if you take both out, they again immediately work as one again. So if you just want to use mono mode all the time, it's a little bit of a hassle because you have to turn it off and then on. So this one pairs, usually it always pairs in stereo mode, but I don't think that's a huge issue. What is also not an issue at all is the fact that there is no background noise. I could no, hear no hiss or anything like that. We have enough volume, actually with quite some nice reserves. Build quality is good. And before I'm getting into the battery life, I want to get into the controls. And that is something that it also has an advantage over so many other ones. For example, once you tap one or the other one, it's for play and pause. Double tap is for the track back or track forward. And the triple tap is, or a click, because these are proper buttons, which I like because there is no accidental um, activation. This has volume control. So triple click volume control. I mean, that's great. And if you long press it, obviously there will be assistant in the super long press or, or just longer press. 
enters the voice assistant. So I'm pretty pleased with that. But now let's get into the one feature that I said I was looking for, and it was way above average battery life. They claim eight hours, and I have to actually say that it's pretty impressive what I achieved, because with a quite high volume, I would say around 80%, which is I think actually more than most people would use. I constantly got six hours and 40 minutes. So I would say for many people, actually seven hours are even possible or more. But I would say as a general, just to keep it moderate, six and a half hours, I don't think anyone would use them at 100% all the time and still then more than six hours shouldn't be actually an issue. The one thing that surprised me a lot, which is almost a little bit unbelievable, when I used them in mono mode, they held up for 10 hours, which is odd because from about six and a half, seven hours to 10 hours sounds a lot more than, for example, on the Soundcore Liberty Air, where I got usually five hours and in mono mode, six hours. So difference is bigger. I don't know why, but it's great to see. The only thing that I have to say that the del delay might be an issue for a lot of people because if you want to watch movies, even though it should support ASC, that was the one thing that was still obvious, a little bit of a delay. But if you just want to listen to music, I don't have an issue with that at all. So now let's finally get to the sound, start off with the imaging and sound stage. And here I have to say it is slightly above average in terms of this price range. So it's a little bit wider and the imaging is a little bit better, but I don't want to get too much into that because otherwise this review will end up way too long. And then vocals are nicely distinctuated from the rest instruments. The dynamic is, I would say, okay, which is generally for a bigger purpose scene, not that big, but for what it is for its price, especially actually really good. Now, sound signature, I would the, um, explain like this. A little bit more bass, a little bit less mids, and we have a peak in the highs, I would say, because I wouldn't say that, that the highs are generally boosted. There is more of a peak because there is quite a noticeable roll-off, and that just means that you usually get enough high so it doesn't seem muffled, but at, especially at the higher end, I would wish for a little bit more clarity, a little bit more openness, something a little bit brighter, because they sometimes sound like clarity is missing. But that's if you want a lot of clarity, because I think it's actually a very nice bass boosted mainstream level that is not fatiguing at all. You can use them for hours and hours and on a very pleasant level. Now about those actual attributes like the bass, the one super impressive part about these ones is the sub bass because they actually accentuate quite low and then they put a lot of extra boost onto that low end because the sub bass is pretty strong, actually surprisingly impressively strong, but not kind of boomy or flabby. It actually maintains that level pretty pretty nice now the bass presence i would say is obvious it stands out a little bit more but actually not too much which is pretty nice to see because the balance is still there with the mids and the highs which it's usually quite hard to get especially also at this price point it's also quite punchy has a good resolution about the mids i would have to say nice full vocals not maybe like super rich or something like that but clarity especially for some vocal or maybe some older music tracks in the vocal part might be lacking a little bit. Now about the highs, I don't want to call this the weakest part here, but it's just because of the harsh roll off because they usually play high up enough. But like I said, quite a whole or quite a big roll off and there is this peak that peaks really makes a big difference because that one actually rescues what otherwise maybe could have been a little bit too muffled. If you want to boost that part in the equalizer, you can save this and then make it even better. Otherwise, no sibilance, clarity is okay, but it could be better and you don't maybe get a whole lot of details, which also leads me to the genres, which it works best with. I can tell you this, maybe not quite sophisticated or matured enough for detailed like amazing classical music or ballads. It works, but it's not the best part. Where it's the best definitely is bass heavy music because it's not a super extreme heavy bass, but the bass, especially in the low segment, like the sub bass, like I said, is super strong, super ag ag kind of aggressive almost, and it's a super nice bass sound. for so, so electronic music and all those kinds of things, you should be super happy. Pop music works well. I would say metal and rock work good, but there's a little bit more potential for more details or a little bit more clarity, especially if you have some older music. Now, about competition. Well, the only ones that I can point out actually cost more than twice as much as the Sabbath because the Anchor Sound Caliber the Air are usually at around 90 dollars or 100 euros about that. And what they will give you as a counterpart is a little bit more clarity, like I said, so a little bit more of a balanced sound, not quite the great bass though. Then they are a little bit more... I would say comfortable in my ear, especially in the left one. In the right ear, pretty much both are forgettable. 
the anchor are just a tiny little bit more subtle but in terms of looks actually not so if you want that otherwise they are more expensive and they don't quite deliver that battery life and therefore i don't really have any other competition out there because everything else at this price range doesn't nearly offer that battery life or this sound for that price in terms of with the extra features because for example wireless charging usb-c so you have pretty full youtube proof here which brings me to sum this up to my pros and cons great case subtle looks in your ear i have to say volume control wireless charging in terms of features you are pretty well yeah taken care of great fit comfort very good slightly bass boosted mainstream sound battery life for sure and then value now if it comes down to the not that great parts i would have to say the codec is the one thing that i have to point out because there is obviously still a delay no matter if it would actually use aac which doesn't seem to be the thing for people who watch a lot of videos, that's not maybe not perfect. Then the sound is also a little bit grainy, something I actually forgot to mention. So not a big thing, but if I would have to point it out, yeah, it's a little bit grainy, a little bit more clarity would have been nice. And one thing that I also didn't even mention because it's not really a crucial thing, but we have Chinese voice or if, you, if the messages come out, if it turns on and so on, it's Chinese, yeah. So for who are these? I would say for every bass lover, someone who wants great bass, not just a lot of bass, if you want it boosted, <laughs> it's possible, and everyone who wants great battery life. For who is it not? Well, everyone who wants a little bit more of a sophisticated, more neutral sound, more maybe a little bit more balanced, and everyone who watches a lot of movies with these. So, general conclusion, great value, pretty strong, all the way with a lot of features, and no really significant downsides. So makes it pretty easy of a recommendation. Because I mean, if you would ask my, me, I would still go for the Sound Liberty Air. But I also have to mention that like all the other truly wireless have, uh, earphones, I get these for free to keep. And if I then have to choose, I will just take this one because for me, it's a little bit more comfortable. Battery life is good enough and it sounds a little bit more balanced with a little bit more height that I prefer. But I would be lying if I would tell you to buy these over the Sabbath when it comes down to value because you get pretty pretty close with these ones with actually some benefits with USB type C for example wireless charging volume control and so on and so forth more base if you want that better battery life for less than half the price that's where I'm gonna leave it okay I hope you liked it until next time bye